I continue my experimentation with the source data pack and this is my first court game game and it utilizes one of the cards I've been waiting for for such a long time, industrial genomics. Um, this card is the best ID card designed by the Netrunner developer team in a long, long time. I really love it. And I can't wait to try all the possibilities with it, but more on that in a later video. Um, so if you ask me to create the most competitive deck that I can think of, think of with industrial genomics, this is what I would come up with. On the forums, there's a lot of discussion about how you can make this a net damage deck, a fast advance deck. I choose to go down the RP route of taxing. And uh, my deck is called Me. It's a Japanese character, uh, true to the flavor of the game, being in the Japanese Jinteki Corporation. Uh, it is represented by uh, a character with three strokes. Each of the strokes represents an obstacle that the runner must overcome in order to have a chance of defeating my deck. Um, the three obstacles are uh, click stealing, credit taxing, and net damage. So yeah, it pretty much plays my RP deck. The only difference is that um, instead of forcing the runner to run on the central before hitting my remote, I force them to run through archives, which is full of shocks. My opening hand is crazy. There are two shocks in there already. You don't get this every day. Um, the only reason why I would even think of mulliganing this hand is because there's no ice, which means that, uh, yeah, I'm very vulnerable. But against a kid, I'm not so worried. She's not playing a cow siphon, so that's fine with me. In fact, I know that kid cannot apply any central pressure at all, aside from data suckers and leg work. So with that, I actually dedicate my second piece of ice, a Yagura, onto R&D. And you notice that I'm drawing a lot in my first few turns. This allows me to chuck all my shops into uh, archives. So immediately my archives is live with 2 net damage. And since my R&D is so well fortified, I decide to play Shell Corporation. It is protected by Yagura and a Himitsubako, both of which I can rest. So I'm actually feeling very happy about this. Um, oh, and by the way, both shocks are face down. So it actually costs him um, 5 credits to trash my Shell Corporation. It's not worth it for him. Um, you'll notice also in the early turns that I didn't play my subliminal messaging. This was to keep my hand size up so that I can trash all my shops. So moving on, now I actually have some protection on HQ because I'm worried about the Nisei in my hand. And I continue to get agenda flooded, but uh, no, I'm not agenda flooded. This is not agenda flooding. That's only two agendas. The best thing is I found my third shock. I'm ready to discard it soon. But I discarded the NAPD instead because in case he runs archives, I want to be able to reshuffle all my agendas. With Jackson. Um, I'm not planning to score agendas just yet. Alright, so he attempts to contest my Shell Corporation, a very wise move. Shell Corporation is great in industrial genomics because it costs so much to trash. So it's actually one of the best economic cards actually, uh, if you can uh, protect it uh, as I did here. So what I do here is actually to not rest the Himitsu Bako. I let him in, knowing that if he wants to trash it, he has to pay a high steep price because I have a lot of face down cards. I have four face down cards in my archive, so he actually had to pay seven credits to trash it. That's not cheap. I'm very happy to let him trash it for seven credits to deny me three credits any day. So he does try to check my archives. I reshuffle the agendas and the two shocks hit. Uh, one of the most important things is that it snapped a sneak door beta from his hand. That was huge. And now that he's out of overmind tokens, um, he runs R&D again, attempting to now trash my Shell Corporation. But um, this time I do rest the Himitsu Bako to keep him out of my server. I do not want him to... <coughs> yeah. Uh, <coughs> trash my Shell Corporation if I can help it. So I charge up Shell Corporation, pretty confident that he won't get through again. And then I follow it up with... I, I don't really want to play any cards from my hand at this point. I want to trash cards from my hand. So I trash the shock. That's my third shock. And that's one card in archive. So this is something I have to keep track of uh, constantly. How many cards are there in archives? How much does it cost him to trash my upgrades and assets? Alright, subliminal messaging bounces back my hand because he didn't run. This is huge. Now, subliminal messaging is good for two things. You can either use it to get money which I really need here, hence I played it for money. Or you can just discard it normally, which will give you face down cards in archives, 
which will make it taxing. So this is why Subliminal is a core card in industrial genomics, just as Oversight AI is in Blue Sun. Alright, I hit Shell Corporation again. Now I think there are six credits on it. I discard the melange. I, with Shell Corporation running good and I have 10 credits, I don't need the melange. Instead, now I'm focused on setting up my combo server. This deck is completely reliant on the Rural Valley Caprice Nisei combo. Now, this was a staple back in the RP days, uh, back in the day before currents were released, uh, before the time of Enhanced Login Protocol. The most competitive RP decks featured Rural Valley into Caprice Nisei, which is a pain to run through. So that's, clicks, uh, that's RP click taxation for you. I've imported that into Industrial Genomics. And yeah, so now, um, even though you can run on my Rural Valley server on your first click, and even if you beat the Caprice side game, good luck trashing the Rural Valley. So, um, I continue charging my Shell Corporation, and I discard uh, Future Perfect into Archives. I read on the forum somewhere, someone mentioning that um, the Future Perfect in Archives is actually one of the best things you can do if you're playing Shocks in Industrial Genomics. This is because they don't want to take 3 net damage every time just to get a chance of stealing the Future Perfect. It's straight agenda point, sure, but 3 net damage is a lot. It's basically take, stealing your en entire turn from the runner. So yeah. So because he didn't attempt to contest my Rural Valley server, I now install and advance my Caprice Nisei. Oh, uh, sorry, Nisei Mark II. Um, and he doesn't even bother contesting it, so I score it. So note that there are three phase down cards in archives now. If he wants to run my Rural Valley server, he has to pay a lot of money, but he has been getting a lot of money these past few turns. He has 42 credits to his name, my goodness. That's without prepaid voice pads, mind you. He has been getting a lot of money. He, hasn't been, he has been playing very passively, which I like, but his money stack really scares me. Um, yeah, so I attempt to score another Nisei. Now, once you have your first Nisei Mark II score, the rest chain like Astro, Astro scripts because a server that is protected by both Caprice Nisei and Rural Valley is basically impenetrable, even if I'm not going to rest the ice on it, as you'll see later. So, um, in case you're wondering, the ice that is protecting Rural Valley turns out to be a wall of, a wall of thorns. And he now shows why he needs all those credits. He plays his breaker, Sageosaurus. Sage on Dinosaurus. So, a bit of quick math here shows that the Sage Sagesaurus can benefit from 4 MU. That's 4 strength plus 2 from Dinosaurus. So it basically has, it can break any barriers and code gates of strength 6 or below. It's expensive at 2 credits a pop, but he has all the money in the world. Unfortunately for him, he's spending all that money to trash my upgrades and assets at a premium cost. That Caprice Nisei cost him 4 credits to trash. He went trigger happy knowing that he had a lot of credits. And he still has a loaded KD Jones, mind you. That's something I neglected. 12 credits on KD Jones. He is filthy rich. So, now it's my turn. If I had an agenda here, I would be chaining it straight into the remote. But there are no agendas. So instead, I attempt to dis distract him by playing the melange. If he doesn't contest it, I get to hit it for 7 credits. If he does, he's going to pay a premium price to uh, destroy it. So let's see what he does here. Now he's playing aggressively. Now he attempts to trash all the stuff in my uh, fortified remote, which is a good thing to do. You need to break the Caprice Nisei Rural Valley combo. Otherwise, I get free agendas, and that's not what you want. He attempted, but the Caprice side game kept him out. So now, another problem with my deck is that it doesn't run too much money. It's really reliant on Shell Corporation and Melange, so I had to hit, hit my Shell Corporation. Oddly enough, he hasn't been contesting my R&D at all. He must be afraid of all my Jinteki sentries. So yes, he goes for the safe server, which is HQ. But he should know that there are no agendas in HQ. If there were, I would be pumping them out like nobody's business. And I top deck third and final copy of Nisei Mark II. So I unload Shell Corporation and advance it. So what's he going to do here? Is he going to attempt to contest my super server? Rural Valley into Caprice Nisei is very unforgiving. So he lost two clicks to run this server. We play a side game. He fails. 
he's now down two clicks. Is he going to run again? He has to, because I'm about to score a gender. Once again, he fails the side game and loses two clicks. Right there, he basically lost his entire turn. And even if he did manage to win a side game, I have a Nisei token to stop him. So I chain into my third Nisei and yeah, it's pretty much game over right now. I can stop any three of his runs. There's no way he's going to be able to get the agendas he needs to win the game. So I finally review the second upgrade on R&D. It wasn't a Caprice Nisei that he might have thought it was. It's an Akitaro Watanabe. So that allows me to rest Eli for cheaper. It's another one of my money cards. And I end his Maker's Eye run with Nisei, with a Nisei token. So yeah, this is RP at its finest, but in a different shell. Oh man, this is really, really unforgiving. So I couldn't find any agendas, so I'll just show you my entire hand of non-agendas. Don't run my hand anymore. <laughs> yep, and he sees all the sentries. He should have reason to worry. Um, Jinteki is probably the one corp he doesn't want to play because he has no solutions for sentry except for overmine. And that is very taxing because Komainu will hit him for lots of net damage. Alright, I finally find my agenda, so I'm pumping it out. What can he do? Really, what can he do? He cannot fetch the agenda from there. There's no. He knows that himself. I have two Nisei tokens. It costs him all four clicks to run on my remote. He's not going to make it. So he attempts a run on archives. Well, he's right. There is an agenda there, but not before I hit him for three net damage. And we played a side game one last time in which he loses, and that's that. So yes, this was a very good demonstration of the potential power of my deck. Of course, there are various weaknesses against... Uh, corps that can actually runners that can actually apply HQ pressure, it's a uh, much harder to play. Now you notice that I never ever had to rest my rural valley, the ice that's protecting the rural valley server. In fact, I placed the ice there only for one reason, so that I didn't have to rest the Caprice Nisei uh, before he made the run. With the ice protecting it, I can wait till he makes a run before resing Caprice Nisei, and that's all you need really. With Caprice Nisei, you have a two in three chance of basically stealing two clicks from the runner, and that is why this combo is so powerful. The biggest downside is money, basically. It costs you so much to rest that real value. It's the same cost as Sand Sand City Grid and Off the Grid. It's very expensive, and it can be trashed relatively easily, and that's where Industrial Genomics comes in. If they attempt to run archives before running my server, they will only have one shot at making it through Caprice. If they don't run through archives, they can get through, they can steal any agenda in there, but will they pay upwards of 7 credits to trash the rural valley? Upwards of 4 credits to trash the Caprice Nisei? I wouldn't think so. So yes, taxation at its finest. Um, you don't really need any eyes on the remote server at all, just one as a placeholder for Caprice Nisei. The rest of your eyes can go on R&D and HQ, and that's exactly what I did to prevent him from R&D locking me. And that's how I managed the victory. No need for Archive's eyes when Shock can protect you from everything. Amazing deck? Perhaps. I'll need to experiment with this more often. Thanks for watching and happy netrunning. Goodbye.